You know it's a great feeling? Sinking hundreds of hours of your life into a TV show only for the story to drop the ball on the final hurdle and leave you saying, seriously, was that it? I'm looking at you, Lumberjack Dexter. Now, of course, it doesn't take away from the joy you had along the way, but a bad ending is going to be the last thing you remember from that treasured show. So if creators could keep the Starbucks cups out of our high fantasy epics, that'd probably help. I'm Jess for What Culture. Let's talk 10 TV shows ruined by horrible endings. Spoilers ahead, so beware. Number 10, Lost. Why is this one up so high, I hear you ask? Isn't it universally acknowledged to be a pretty bad ending? Well, yes, but it does have its fans, so I put it at the top of the list. So if you in particular liked this ending, you can tell your friends that it only just scraped it into what culture's horrible endings list. Notorious for its loose threads and unwillingness to provide answers to fans' burning questions, Lost's showrunners doubled down in the finale and handed loyal viewers what we probably should have been used to receiving by that point a bunch more questions. The main storyline played out alongside a convoluted flash sideways timeline that had audiences arguing about whether the characters were dead all along, as the show rounded up with the characters in a church waiting for a bright light. The creators later confirmed this wasn't the case, and the point of the show was to tell a story about people in search of answers. Pretty sneaky way of getting out of ever explaining the point of those numbers, if you ask me. Number nine, True Blood. If you, like me, stuck through the crappiest plot points of True Blood because it had a really great theme song, then you're among those of us who were seriously burned by the bizarre finale. The gory, salacious vampire romp ended not with a bang, but with an uninspired and, dare I say, boring wrap-up that seemed to undermine most of the hot vampy melodrama that had been delivered in the seven years prior. Years of will-they-won't-they they between Sookie and Bill ended in him deciding she needed to kill him for her happiness, her doing so, and then marrying some other random dude we never even got to see on screen. At least Jessica and Hoyt got hitched, but even so, this one was seriously not the racy vampire epic we signed up for. Number eight, Pretty Little Liars. For the uninitiated, PLL followed a group of teenage girls who received threats from a mysterious person that went only by A. The ending of Pretty Little Liars is so ridiculous, there's just no way it's what the writers had conceived from the get-go. If you're one of the people who sat through seven seasons of this show, do leave me a comment down below and I will send you my sincerest sympathies. Over the years, the show introduced new A's, uber A's, and misleading A's, but it came to a head in the final season that started with a time jump. Never a good start. It was ultimately revealed that the Grand Mastermind was a character who had never been on the show before. Not only that, A turned out to be main character Spencer's evil British twin, complete with bad British accent. Seriously, you can't make this stuff up. Well, the creators of Pretty Little Liars did. They should not have. Number seven, Scrubs. Plenty of us have chosen to collectively forget Scrubs' awkward fall from grace. The show actually ended three different times between swapping networks and the injection of new cast members during its ninth and final season, with each ending getting progressively worse. The official ending, though, came in its ninth season that was branded Scrubs Med School. The Scrubs charm left with almost all the main characters, and while the performances weren't awful, it all just felt like a weird university production of the beloved sitcom. As a result, the unsatisfying ninth season finale largely focused on a bunch of characters we pretty much just met, and the show had well and truly outstayed its welcome. Anyway, if we can all agree that JD walking down the hallway out of Sacred Heart, imagining that he's seeing all of the characters that had impacted his life was the actual ending of Scrubs, that'd be great. Number six. Gossip Girl. This is probably the only show to one-up Pretty Little Liars' poor effort at making the mysterious Puppet Master character someone completely disappointing. Gossip Girl's creators decided that the person with the conniving, gossip-obsessed wherewithal to terrorize loaded Upper East Side teenagers for years on end was social outsider Dan Humphrey. Dan Humphrey? Seriously? Not only that, but when they find out, the gang doesn't seem to mind, and Serena, whose life had been destroyed by Gossip Girl more than once, decides to take Dan back. The best thing Thing to come out of this finale is Dan Humphrey actor Penn Badgley going on to play a murderous stalker in You, which it's universally agreed is just him playing his Gossip Girl character again. Number five, Roseanne. The final season of the original Roseanne is famously bizarre as it features the central family winning the lottery. Hijinks ensued, ordinary people problems evaporated, and then in the final episode, we were met with a 15 minute voiceover explaining that the titular character just made up most of these events for a book. In a tragic turn, it was revealed 
revealed that Roseanne's husband Dan never actually recovered from his heart attack in what was a really dark and strange ending for a popular sitcom. Unsurprisingly, the ending was pretty much ignored when the show was revived in 2018, and it has ultimately proved the old adage, nobody likes a dream sequence. Number four, Two and a Half Men. In the 12 long years Two and a Half Men was on the air, it trundled downhill for some time. Charlie Sheen's character was killed off and replaced by Ashton Kutcher and Jake, the half part of Two and a Half Men, left the show as a series regular in the 10th season. By its finale, it became pretty clear no one was going to tell showrunner Chuck Lorre no. It suggested that Charlie didn't actually die, he was just being held captive by his longtime stalker Rose. Presumably doubling down on the very real blow up between Sheen and creator Chuck Lorre, the show ends with a stand-in Charlie getting a piano dropped on his head. We then cut to Chuck Lorre himself, who says Sheen's catchphrase, winning, before also being crushed by a piano. It all came off a little mean-spirited, and it was a pretty ugly way for it all to go down for everyone involved after 12 long years. Number three, How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother is pretty solidly in the top three most hated series finales, probably because it dragged us along for nine years about who this mysterious mother was, and then it ended up not mattering at all. Kristen Milioti was a perfect casting choice, and shockingly actually did live up to the ethereal, perfect figure the mother had been built up to be. Unfortunately, as soon as she gets together with Ted, the show zaps ahead in time and kills her off. To add insult to injury, the entire last season centered around Barney and Robin's relationship and wedding, which was all thrown to the wayside by the finale. That said, the reason I do love this ending is the conceit that the only reason Ted is telling this entire story to his kids is so he can get the go-ahead to go bone Robin. That's hilarious. Number two, Dexter. Conversely, this one just bums me out. Dexter was a fantastic show featuring a really compelling protagonist and some truly terrifying villains. Fans of the show had a rough time watching things go from bad to worse after Dexter struggled to match the narrative heights of the Trinity Killer showdown. Ultimately, we had to endure the absolute cringe of Deb developing feelings for her stepbrother, her subsequent unceremonious death, Dexter sailing off into a hurricane to fake his own death, then ending up in Miami with a new identity. He'd also swapped his serial killer garb for very unflattering lumberjack plaid, which is annoying for a whole other reason. It's a crappy end for anybody, but none more so than an internal conflict riddled serial killer. If there's a silver lining here, it's that we recently found out this isn't the end after all. Dexter is going to return for a new season in 2021, featuring Michael C. Hall again, and I am so happy I could cry. But first, let's finish off this video. Number one. Game of Thrones. Holy fall from grace, remember when this was the best show on TV? Sadly, it fell into that aggravating trap of a final season completely betraying all of its storylines and character development. Daenerys Targaryen changed personalities and turned into a murderous tyrant after being romantically rebuffed by her nephew, making parents everywhere super regret naming their daughters Khaleesi. On top of that, Bran, who did nothing for like entire seasons, ended up on the Iron Throne. Fans were so mad about the rushed nature of the last season and its narrative choices that appearances from the showrunners were cancelled at Comic-Con in the wake of the fallout. Basically, Game of Thrones deserved better, and so did we. I'm gonna go think about the Dexter reboot so I don't go all mad queen thinking about these crappy endings, but I've been Jess for What Culture. Make sure you stay tuned, and I will see you again soon.